Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you case number 21 in the best way to do cataract surgery series. This is a one plus dense lens, a medium and irregular pupil, and I'll show you efficient and consistent nucleus disassembly. Sometimes these softer lenses are difficult to prolapse out of the bag. You try to spin the lens and the lens is difficult to spin. So you're going to see a way to efficiently and consistently crush and disassemble the lens using mechanical fracturing. So I use my corneal mark to help me center and size my rexus. I make my superior and inferior paracentesis incisions. And then I inject intracameral lidocaine and epinephrine to help me anesthetize and dilate the pupil. I'm injecting dispersive viscoelastic. And then I'm going to do my triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove and then place the blade through the groove tunnel and then enter the anterior chamber for my triplanar corneal incision. I then do my puncture style capsule rexus. I make a puncture pull down and sweep a little bit to the right to create a little flap. I grab and re-grab and try to follow the contours of my corneal mark, which will help me center and size my rexus. I'm grabbing the flap edge and going around a few clock hours and then re-grabbing. I'm making sure I don't put any pressure on my wound to help minimize any viscoelastic egress, which will help me keep my capsule rexus centered without radializing. I burp some viscoelastic out and then I begin my Capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I place the cannula out to the contralateral equator underneath the anterior capsular surface. Rotate the cannula tip 90 degrees downward. I get a nice fluid wave. I decompress on the left and then spin the lens to the right side. I lift my corneal incision with my chopper and I go into the eye with the thicker tip without irrigation to minimize decimase trauma. I remove the surface epinuclear material. And by removing the surface epinuclear material, I can see that step off, and I'm able to go underneath the epinucleus with confidence, making sure that I'm definitely in the bag. I place a chopper up to the equator. I turn the phaco tip more vertically. I crush the lens piece meeting in the middle, and this divides the lens completely in half. I place a chopper out to the contralateral equator, pull the chopper centrally towards the phaco tip, and this crushes the right hemonucleus. Now I have three separate lens pieces. And I'm able to go after the quadrant in front of me. I'm able to place the chopper out to the equator, pull the lens up, and then I crush the lens pieces into smaller bite-sized pieces using vacuum in this instance to remove the lens material. I'm able to place the chopper out to the equator and then prolapse the second hemonucleus and again, I begin to start crushing the lens pieces into smaller bite-sized pieces using mechanical fracturing forces. And once the pieces are small enough, I'm using high vacuum and a little bit of ultrasonic energy to emulsify the lens pieces. You can see all the action is in a central safe zone. I'm able to use a chopper to manipulate the lens pieces out of the bag without trying to grab the lens pieces with the FACO. To pull lens pieces out of the bag with high vacuum and ultrasonic energy, in my opinion, is a less safe and less efficient way to pull pieces out of the bag. I turn the second hemonucleus in front of me, I place the chopper out to the equator, and then crush the girth of the lens piece between the chopper and the FACO tip, and this divides the third and fourth quadrant. And then I pull out that third quadrant with the chopper, and I'm able to crush the lens pieces with the chopper and the FACO tip into smaller pieces using intermittent bursts of FACO energy as well as vacuum. With this last quadrant, I place the chopper out to the equator, again, crush the lens pieces into smaller pieces, and then I'm carefully and slowly crushing the lens pieces into smaller pieces and emulsifying them. Do the same maneuver over and over again, again, placing the chopper out to the equator, and then crushing the lens piece between the chopper and the FACO tip, and then crushing the lens pieces into smaller bite-sized pieces, and then using intermittent bursts of ultrasonic energy and vacuum in the process. Once all the endonucleus is removed, I'm removing the epinuclear material. Again, I don't have a separate setting for this because I feel comfortable with foot pedal modulation to control the amount of vacuum. I use a chopper to, once I grab the epinucleus, I use a chopper to help me pull the epinucleus up and away from the posterior capsule. By using the chopper, I'm able to pull the epinucleus up and away from the posterior capsule. This makes it safe and easy to remove the epinucleus using high vacuum, and I'm using that chopper as a buffer between the epinucleus and the posterior capsule. So you can use a chopper to manipulate the epinucleus in a safe manner.
I push BSS and then withdraw the phaco tip and then push the INA in. This is my way of switching the instruments while maintaining chamber stability. I'm using the INA to remove the cortical material. However, you can see the bag is fairly clean. So then I'm using the polish mode to polish around the bag. You can see that I do have some cortical material adherent to the posterior capsule, more so on this subincisional area. So I'm going port down and I'm very carefully using this very safe polymer tip, removing these cortical wisps, which are again in the subincisional space on the posterior capsular surface. I noticed with these cortical fibers that are attached to the posterior capsule, you need to start centrally and kind of pull peripherally towards the subincisional space in this case, and that gets rid of those very adherent fibers attached to the posterior capsule. And so now I'm going to use my BSS cannula to do my sub incisional cortical flush. You can see some cortex that's being liberated by using the capsular flush technique. And you can see that there's quite a bit there on that side. And I'm using the INA again in the polish mode to go after the cortical material that's on that side. I tried to go after it on the left side, but I had a little bit more difficulty. So I decided to inject cohesive viscoelastic in the bag. And then I'm using the sweep, the capsular sweep, the sweep into the subincisional fornix. And lo and behold, you can see I was able to liberate and remove some of that cortical material on the left side. And then I'm sweeping on the right side. I felt pretty confident the right side was pretty clean because I was able to get it with the INA. And then I'm injecting my single piece acrylic intraocular lens by stabilizing the eye with my capsular sweep instrument. Once the lens goes into the bag, I switch to the INA. And again, I go in with irrigation off, inflate, and then I'm going to release each haptic separately, making sure the haptic is not attached to the optic. I rotate the eye 90 degrees clockwise, and then I tilt the lens, and I make sure that the lens tilts and goes into the capsule or fornix by doing this. And if I see it slide over, I know that both haptics are inside the bag. By tilting also, I'm able to get the viscoelastic that's underneath the lens, and then evacuate the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. I polish underneath the anterior capsule rim to remove any more potential lens material. And then I push BSS into the eye, making sure there's no more viscoelastic, and then I hydrate my incision. So you can see here, this is a medium pupil, a fairly soft lens with an irregular pupil. I use my corneal mark to help me center and size my rexus. So despite the pupil being irregular, I'm able to get a very well-centered capsular rexus over the lens. And you can see I had efficient lens disassembly without any fuss. I was able to prolapse the lens pieces fairly easily and confidently by using the chopper to pull the lens pieces out of the bag. Again, utilizing and leveraging mechanical fraction forces, crushing the lens pieces, using minimal ultrasonic energy, just using high vacuum, to emulsify the lens pieces. Again, using mechanical fracturing forces, I feel like this is a more efficient and more reproducible way to disassemble the lens and pull the lens pieces out of the bag. So I hope this was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe, and I thank you for your attention.